Hello everyone, this is Gurry here, and I'm a competitive player from New York City who has competed and traveled for multiple NRS titles. You may know me from watching me compete with Garrus and MK11, and today, I'll be your guide for playing Garrus and MK1. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to Dash Fight for more MK1 character guides and fighting game content. Let's get started. So this time around, Garrus is a lot different than what he was in MK11. Um, in MK11, he was a combination between a grappler, zoner, brushdown character. Uh, but in this game, he he's mostly rushdown uh, and the zoning not as strong. Still got grapple moves, but it's very, very different than, than MK11. Um, one thing I want to keep you to keep in mind for you guys is some habits you picked up from mk11 he's going to be a very different character in this game so the way you're going to approach him is going to be a uh, different just a different take on the kind of character he is there's still going to be moments where you would have to walk away uh, but a lot of the moments you do want to get close to your opponent uh, and just do do damage as much as possible but uh let's get into some of his normals so I just want to start his standing one. Very, pretty basic, but uh, one thing I do want to point out is that he is plus three with this button. So it's very good. Um, if you were to jail, it's also seven frames. So if you were to jail um, with, the, with that one and, and you force him to block with standing one, you can just go uh, straight into a grab. But keep going with the with your other buttons as well. Uh, but your standing one is going to be ro really good. You know, um, I wouldn't say always commit to the full string, and we'll get into the full strings later. But as your starter button, this is pr pretty solid uh, for for jailing and pressuring. But what they want to know is is his sweep. I do want to point out you're going to be using this sweep a lot um, in, in certain matchups. This is actually a really really good sweep. Just the amount of range this sweep has is incredible. So like right here, even from this range, it's like you just reptile, you force it a block, it is pretty safe. He has a lot of pushback, even if they block up close. It's minus eleven, but still the pushback and the block sun off of this thing is very um is really really good. I recommend using this as much as you can. Um just know the range because it is it does have a bit of recovery, so if they were to jump at this moment, you would get punished. But get used to using the sweep once you know your, your ranges. It's really good. Uh, but and once you start incorporating that sweep, he has a single hit overhead. Decently, pretty decent speed. Puts a full screen on hit. Just nice quick damage. Uh, but keep in mind that this is unsafe on block. So minus 25. Um, if you do it, at, you can actually do it at the round start. Yes, yeah, from that range, for like round start would be minus minus 24. So look at that. Yep. So a combination of the sweep and the overhead. You, just, you want to be using, uh, and we'll get into we'll get into ways on using these buttons more and more effectively in combination with this with special moves. His poke game is okay. Um, his his down one just with all down ones in this game, it is pretty very negative on block. But they can punish with a down one. You're not gonna really be using this as much. I I recommend not getting the habit of uh, using down one for. Uh, for pressure only if you know if you're just trying to check them um does not have a lot of range pretty stubby seven frames but uh a lot of characters will, will out, can outspace you and using this down one will just leave you open for punishment um on the other hand i recommend using his down three and his down four are really good uh this is uh two frames faster than his down one now uh, it is minus eight but again it's hard to punish but just no hurt box. He has a bit of range and his his down one, which is a really good check. Yeah. So if you go 
We score here. Down three. We jail into the to the standing one. That is plus three. One of the ways you can just apply pressure. And the stand four has pretty good pushback as well. Plus on plus on hit. And barely negative on block. See that pushback? Very good. If you're if you uh you love Garrus's down four from MK11, then this will be right at home for you. It's very, very similar. It's like a little projectile that shoots. And again, we want to combine these pokes with the sweep. And just just annoy just annoy opponent a little bit. Two normals I want to look over is his back one and forward two. Back one is a really good, really good normal. 60 frames. This is going to be your, your main whip punisher. Um, if they start throwing buttons, you make a prediction. This is going to help you get that extra race to uh, lead and punish with. Uh, because this, if you can hit confirm, it's a nice little follow-up that's special cancelable. Both hits are safe. So you go with the back one. And the back one, too, is minus seven. And on hit, you can get to some to some combos. So highly recommend the using the back one for, for folks. If you just want to play with it, you don't have to overcommit to it. If you want to just bait them um, into pressing a button, then this would be the mover to do it. And it's four two. Not a lot of range. It moves him forward a little bit. Um, this has also a pretty good follow-up. It's safe. So this whole string, this this string is negative, but you can you can hit confirm four two four. Um, so both of these hits are safe, and it's not not hard to do. It's just I would just be careful of using this in the range. Uh, it's better to instead of just doing a forward two to try with punter to dash up and then forward two. To, to cancel your dash animation. And it takes some time to get it used to, but once you get it down and you get you get comfortable with this movement, you're gonna start doing dash up forward two into a, into a combo. And you'll see uh, the beginning of these strings uh, within the combo section of this video. Let's go over some of his strings. And uh, so he does have a couple. This one, which comes from the his jab, and then a little animation there. And you'll see that Ender is pretty good, pretty decent, decent damage. Um, if you don't have meter to to spend on uh, ending combos or just in just using it in general to special cancel, you can go for this Ender, which does a lot of damage. Um, on on its own and it also ties into one of his special moves that we're going to get into uh, later uh, but just keep in mind that this is a really good ender and um, also waste time too if you use a cameo pretty good for wasting time because this puts him full screen if you need your cameo to recharge uh, and pretty 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 decent overall now I didn't go over his forward one but this is his forward one is really short safe on block it's m minus six but it's the follow-ups are, are what's pretty good about it um the four one two summons his wall in front of him and it's actually you can actually use this as a projectile so this is what i mean so he has bits bits of zoning so you can actually use this to check because it's pretty fast very deceiving range um it's it's a bit it's on safe on block it's Minus uh, 18, depending on when it hits. And up close, even on block, uh, it's super negative. So I wouldn't recommend just doing this uh, on its own because you can get punished super heavy. Uh, and this also has an ender. So the forward one, two, one plus three, that's the grab. But it's a mid hit. Another good good ender to use within your combos if you want to keep them close. If you don't want to put them full screen or side switch, this is a pretty good ender to use to, to cash out on damage. Um, one thing I would say, so yeah, it is, it is blockable, but they can actually flawless block this string. So I would be really careful just using this string uh, a lot. 
So yeah, if you flawless block it, minus 15. So that is a full combo punish. And uh, they could actually also... Let's see if I can show an example here. Hit grab. Yeah, enhance. Probably enhance that for all. Yeah, so there's a gap between forward one, two, and the end as well. So let's see if I can. Gotta make them block. So this 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 string does have its weaknesses, but it has its uses. See, even right there, be minus if they were expecting it. I wouldn't follow up with it because you move forward and you leave yourself too open. But just use this as a projectile. And it just keeps just to keep the mind games going, so. And I'll briefly mention uh, this string, elbow before me. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> it's called elbow before me or elbow before me. Um, the only important thing is this is an overhead, and uh, this would be this is better using for your your clone for a special move later. Um, on its own, it's not a strong string. Uh, last hits a gap. Uh, I don't recommend using this as much. Um, only for certain situations where you think they're just gonna be ducking. I've, I've ca caught people a lot. People, people were expecting the low a lot um, for being conditioned from sweep or down, down four threes. Um, this would just su surprise them. Um, and the the first hit is is pretty pretty similar. Uh, but I would I just wouldn't use it a lot. Now that we've covered his strings, let's go over his special moves. Now this is what's gonna be uh, what separates Gears from the rest of the cast. What makes him unique is his special moves. It's what's, um, cause these are very different. I don't even, no character in this game has the kind of special moves he has. So very unique and we'll, we'll get into why and how to use them effectively. Um, but first, he has this time stop, just like MK11. Very, very similar. One thing about the, the regular one is you can actually choose what side you want to be on. So let me just get closer. So normally the side switches, but you can say right here. It's a little less, a bit of less damage, but So pretty good. If you just want to adjust your positioning, you don't have the meter for it, or you don't want to spend the meter, I recommend just using that. And some cameos can make this special move extend into a meterless combo. And uh, I'll show one example of that if you're interested in using those cameos. It's just the teleport cameos. Um, but we'll, we'll get into the to the in the cameo section. Um, but just know if you ex this. It freezes the opponent and a visual indicator behind the opponent as well. So, so you know how much time you have. If you just get in a pinch, you can see how much time you have before they uh, unfreeze. And this just takes your last reaction from the hit. So let's say this down two gives a pop up. If you were to freeze them, do a down two at the end of it. It'll give them and pops them up. So with this. Makes him fly forward. The last hit made him fly forward. You you get the idea. Uh, if you're used to MK11 Garrus, uh, we, we don't even need to even go further because it, it pretty much works the exact same. Um, for newer players, this is his freeze move. A lot of a lot of things you could do with it, but the one thing I recommend every player to take away from this is you freeze him. Do not do down two combos with this freeze move. Um, MK11, this was his main bread and butter. Every freeze was a down two. You don't want to do that in this game because they scaled down twos very heavily in combos. Uh, if you can see how much damage I do in this one, it's just six, 16%. But if I, if I freeze them, 
21% already. The combo was not even, I didn't even do a complete combo. And that was already way more than if I were to do two down twos like you did before. So do not get in the habit of doing this. You might do this the year the first time, just instinctually. Um, that's what I had to do is just, I had to get rid of the idea of using down twos within freeze combos because they will hurt your, your damage by a lot. And we don't want that. We want to do as much damage as we can or possibly can um, before even just setting up or anything like that. Um, so I don't recommend using down twos for this one. Now let's get into his grab. So this was just what makes him a grappler. So I think this is history lesson and follow up exam. Um, if you don't remember the names, just consider this is command grab. So this grab, you can't tech it. Um, it. It is a high. So they can actually duck this grab and punish you. So there's a lot of recovery. But it's still, it's still pretty fast. Deceiving range. Uh, but one special thing about this uh, command grab is that if you are in the corner and if you throw the opponent away from the corner, it does a special animation and does extra damage. So normally this is just 12, this is 12% on its own. 1% um, more, more than his regular grab, but still pretty good for a grab not to tech. Keeps them uh, scared if once you're in, you're in this range. Oh, that whiffs, but. <laughs> but if you're in that, that range, then they're expecting a grab. It's pretty good, but if you want to cash out on damage. Oh, I still have him on the flawless flocks. Let me just take that off. For example, if you see on the top, the top right, he has 18%. You know this grab's gonna kill him if he's blocking. Throw him away, and that's it. And there's the game. So that's a that's a way to know that you're gonna win the match with or win the round. Uh, using the health value on, on the top that does 19% but the grab is just is, is pretty decent um, he's only he's one of the only characters in this game that has a command grab I believe the other other person is uh, Reiko uh, for just yeah if you if you read them blocking or duck blocking they get them scared the grab opens them right up so there's always a, just an option if you are having issue if they're just blocking all your attacks a lot A special move that Garrus has that is he's full screen is his sandstorm. Those of you familiar with his quicksand in MK11, this is sort of an essence of what this special move is. Just a ranged attack or projectile that he can shoot from three different ranges to mid, close, and far. He can also amplify it. And this will be a delay before the storm comes out. One thing to know is that if you amplify this, you can't use, uh, throw out any more storms until that storm is cleared. So yeah, if you have this out, just keep in mind that you won't be able to use it until that storm uh, gets, gets used. But um, I will say that this is really... Oh, another another important thing. Um, the depending on where the opponent gets hit it'll have a different reaction so you see reptile from there he actually got hit uh, backwards but if i move it a little closer using the regular one this actually launches him forward so the positioning of this if you hit him forward so let me see him moving close i just missed it there but as you can see you can actually get into a combo 
it's very useful to know um once you see that reaction if you know and anticipate that he's gonna fly forward once you get that hit we see right here then you can just cash out and go into your extenders um but um i will say don't get used to throwing this out a lot if you're used to zoning zoning or if you like zoning um just be aware that this is really negative on block this is minus 27 um there's actually characters who can be even punish from from this range if they block if they block it they can actually just walk up and if they have a long reach button they can actually punish you uh, but this is this should be used as just a check if you know they're gonna move check their movement um if they're just scared of either just moving forward or if they're just dashing a lot and you just want to check them with this just to just make them scared then you can do that but just don't get used to just throwing this out whenever because if you if they jump or if you miss position the storm it's you're gonna leave yourself open for a, a big punish because it's not it's really not that hard to punish if you mess up so just get used to the ranges get used to the recovery on using the the storm and uh you'll you'll be able to use it pretty pretty well now for the main special i want to get over today and this is going to be one that you're going to be using as part of your main game plan for a lot of characters is his countdown so as you see he puts an hourglass uh, above his head and he can do this stack these up to three times and the third one he gets a special move that uses no meter but it does use his stacks it's so if like you get all of them so you can pretty much do them at any any time and it'll, it'll, it'll stack up thinking of throwing a projectile and there you go where it gets the freeze um if you ex it, it gives you st stacks immediately so this is pretty good uh if you get the first hit b b meter bonus if you just want to use it right ahead just to already make them aware that you have this special move because um you can even use it as a form of if you just see them jump because jumps are pretty floaty in this game so if you see them jumping catch them midair because it's it's not not that slow where you can actually just use it uh for that so there's a free combo but yeah it's it's very very good on very good for that um some other things to know with the countdown while you're stacking these up these carry between rounds so if you have two at the end of uh, round one you'll you'll be able to just stack one more and you'll get access to the freeze ability or uh, an extra time stop the full screen time stop you can even call it the uh i'll call it the world stop for now but yeah you can stack these up um, there's also two ways to stack it other than the traditional just stacking up normally so see i have two right now um and if i were to use the shattered sand string this is an hourglass that when you break it it counts as a stack of countdown so you see i have three now still counts so this is what i mean by using this string to end your combos because it gives you a stack which means you're you're not forced to build these stacks up, leaving yourself open or vulnerable. It's very, very useful for, for combos. This, this string has a really good use for that. For decent damage, put them full screen. If you, if you want, you can even stack, stack one if they're not ready, ready for it. Another way to stack it is the EX Sandstorm. So, this actually doesn't stack and i actually mentioned the the shattered sands thing in a bit but you have to wait until the gong until the the sandstorm is activated for the stack to count so if i were to use two of these use it now as you see it it gave me a countdown it didn't give me world stop yet so if i use this I have to get my two stacks. I should have three. I can do my freeze now because it, it it was able to count the stack after the the gong. 
So keep that in mind. See, I'm gonna wait until the gong. And then I can use the the third stack or all the stacks for world stop. Uh, it's just little stuff like that you want to keep in mind. And also, Shattered Sands, this does not count until you break the hourglass. There's actually a really cool interaction with the Darius ca cameo where you can combo off of the Shattered Sand string. But you have to wait until you break the hourglass for it to count. Otherwise, it's it won't count. Um, if you were to use Motaro or Kung Lao during that string, it won't count your your stack unless the hourglass is broken so pretty important to know so world world the world stop from the countdown is a really good tool to just even if even if you don't use it you might they might forget about it but part of the skill is you remembering that you have stacks keeping track of your stacks while your opponent has to also keep track of them because in neutral um if they're not blocking this is blockable they can actually block this and it's it's negative on block but you'll you'll be relatively safe if you do it from from this distance you don't want to do you don't want to do it up close because it's pretty negative but uh it's still if you use your stacks you just have to build them right up again, but it's all about keeping pressure on your opponent while you do other things like the sweep, even the command grab. You, he has, Garrus has a lot of special moves that once you combine them together, your opponent has to keep be on the lookout for so much that it can be overwhelming if they're not ready for the matchup. With three stacks of countdown, Garrus also has access to another special move. Basically, for the barb meter, you can you revert three seconds back to your no location with the health uh, value that you have. So as an example, I'm going to record Reptile doing a simple combo. So that's 32%. So if I have countdown. So, as you saw there, I actually, I actually interrupted uh, Reptile's combo and got my health back from the damage he would have uh, I would have taken. So that normal combo, I would have actually been uh, killed for 32%. It would actually have killed me, but I've used the the redo to to stop that. Uh, but one thing I should know is that while using this, you want to be careful using it. You don't want to be spamming as if um, you were using a, a breaker. You want to make sure that you use this at the right time, the right moment at the right time. Because if you don't, as you saw there, he interrupted me. And that, that was death right there. I, I messed up and I, I would have lost a round and potentially the, the match because I missed time to redo. So it's really important that you know what moves you're getting hit by and what window you have to do a redo see even there it's like you gotta you have to time this this will take a bit of practice getting used to because you do need a bit of a, a window to actually activate the the reduction of the time oh there it is let's say you find the right moment you get to be in a good position um, it freezes them so they can't actually hit you, um, but if they, they can actually bait this move out. Um, so let me see if I can show you. They can actually block, and you saw there, um, I, I didn't like Reptile... Uh, punish that but you can actually punish him on the way back to his original point so the mind game is going to be whether if once they are good players in the future they're going to be looking out for the the fixed point because this is going to be way better than a regular breaker where it's three bars this only takes one bar um so the mind game is going to be whether you're going to be using it to get your health back and into a better position or or not so that's going to be the layers within the matchup. But first thing, you just have to get used to getting those stacks. 
and just timing timing it right to get the reduction back and even there just some interactions where i didn't even know while you were safe i still didn't get the health back but it's it's essentially a free breaker that gives you health if we want to just put put it simply so take advantage of it and get used to all the timings with the opponent's uh strings and special moves a special move i want to go over is redo and this is back forward three turns garris into an ethereal state you can move around and do attacks and specials as normal you can even block in this state uh but with a special thing about this move is if i just make reptile do a move right here in this state he can actually take a free hit before uh reverting back to the point of where he used it um so this is essentially can make the punishes not seem as big as they normally would if you were to do uh, an unsafe move so which means you can go this go to your command grabs and it will revert back to normal you can even go to the the unsafe forward three overhead and this will put you back at the state uh, but one thing to know is this is a really good special move but one thing to know is once players start getting used to the uh, attacks is it takes the, the the full amount of damage you would take on a, a normal a normal attack so down twos are 14 percent you you would take the flat damage as you would so this is going to be most of their highest punishes if they have enough frames to uh, pu punish you. So just keep that in mind. Even though it's a free hit, you still take damage um, from the first hit. No matter uh, what the hit is, you'll take the damage from that attack itself. Um, but if you get hit with a jab, it won't be as damaging. But instead, it, again, you can if you don't do unsafe moves, you can still block in this state. And when you're ready to go back, it'll, it'll get you back because you're only you're only active for uh, a couple of seconds before reverting back. Now, if we ex redo, Garrus will actually freeze the clock and it will summon the clone. And this we there, we can spend a whole entire video on this move alone because there's so much you could do with it because. Um, the special thing about this day is when he freezes it, you can input your attacks as normal. And look at that. It will, it will make your own attacks and you can move freely while your clone is attacking. So there's just so many applications with this move. It's like already a simple combo of 20%. And just using the clone, it's just there's so many ways to, to use it. So this is going to be what separates the good Garrus players from the great Garrus players is how you use this move. Because this costs two bars of meter. So you have to use it wisely. You have to know um, what what your next step is on moving it. Um, but the, the big plus on this move is if uh, let me just make the a uh, reptile jump for a second so if you want to jump or jump jump forward he actually freezes the time so you can actually react to how um, you're going to punish your opponent if they do an attack or move if there's any movement you can actually react in time and plan ahead of uh, what you'll do you can either make the clone attack and then air to air them and uh, it's just so just so good for pressure. So many applications for it. Um, you can. It's just like the the low or even the overhead. One thing I will note is that if you make the clone do the overhead, it will disappear um, after it's done. So it's not going to recover. It will disappear instantly. Um, so just keep that in mind if you just want to use a, a, a low overhead. But this is what I mean. This string um, el elbow before me. If you, you can make the clone do it for a quick overhead low, and look at that. You blocking overhead or low into a full combo is really hard to guess, which is what makes this move so strong. Um, let me just make 
block all. Isn't and if I if I choose if I can choose to make the clone, I can even attack after that. Uh, but if they were to even get hit by the low. Look at that. Like, let's say you were to open them up, you could confirm into a combo, get a stack of countdown, and just just to leave it simply, it's just really good for pressure, really good for reading your opponent's next move. Um, getting those two bars is really important. If you can build as much meter with those two bars, um, you, you, it's all about setting up situations for uh, them to, to, to punish them. Uh, but we're going to get into that if there's going to be some combos you can use in this. Uh, but this is where your creativity is going to shine. Just know this is how the move works. And there's so many ways to apply it. Um, you can't... One thing I will know is you cannot use your cameo while your clone is attacking. It will count as a cameo. Um, the exception to this is if your cameo is already out. Um, Sub-Zero is a bad example, but let's say you use Darius. If Darius is kicking or he's doing his drop kick, you can actually um, summon him. Or, uh, I'm sorry, do an ambush and then make your clone attack and to do for further mix-ups. Uh, that is the exception to the rule, but uh, otherwise you cannot summon your cameo during uh, the, the clone's attacks. But just keep that in mind because this is one of the the high the highlights of uh, Garrus' special moves, and I recommend just playing around with it, seeing uh, wh what you can do, what options. But for a beginner, the, what I recommend is you do it and do the two one the overhead low because you can time that with your own low into a full combo. Uh, but um, tips on inputting it. Since timing is an input here, uh, once you see him, he slams his hands, he slams his uh, his knuckle and, and hand together. That's when you start inputting it. When you hear those clicks, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna press anything. You're not gonna hear anything. But once I start pressing buttons, it's reading my inputs. So that is a, a sound cue to know what buttons are you're pressing into the timing of it um unfortunately in uh practice mode you can't see the inputs visually but you can hear them so that helps me with timing my attacks and knowing what i can use uh but yeah i just i just love this special move there's just so so many ways to do it and i feel like every garris player is gonna have a different way of using this this uh special it's actually incredible uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, I can spend all all day talking about this move and different ways to use it. Uh, but for now, just just see what you can find with that and uh, use the overhead low with the clone in combination with your low, and then uh, go go from there. And lastly, his special move down back four denial, pretty standard. Um, this is gonna be your wake up attack. This is armored. This is his armor attack. You can use this for anti airs um, or for extending combos. Um, a good example is this would hit them standing, uh, and you're and you're plus 18, which is good for for the corner or just taking your turn after. Uh, but if you were to do the back one two string, you can actually link these two together into a full combo. So. Or just important thing to know, and if they try to jump in on, on you with an attack, you can EX it for the security of the armor, or just do a, re a preemptive one, re a regular, and then extend your combo. But yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, the this armor attack is it's just this, the standard for other characters. Um, you can't really get much off of it. For standing so i don't recommend using this while they're standing unless you're gonna go for a setup into uh double time uh but i'm not gonna spend too much time on this one but just know that this is your armored attack if you read them 
uh, pressuring you and you want them to get off of you, just use spin the meter to do it. it but it is also punishable on block. So just just like uh, other spe most armored moves on wake up. Now let's get started on this fatal blow. So it's pretty pretty decent. Um, this is the max range of the Fatal Blow, just so you can keep in mind on how far you can use this. You want to get around about this range, um, wait for them to throw a projectile. It makes them scared to do it in neutral. So on top of other stuff like his stack and countdowns, um, him having Fatal Blow also makes this a lot scarier. It's also pretty good for combos as well. This is, this is a basic one. Um, the freeze doesn't scale the fatal blow by a lot, so it's a really good thing to know. But I will say that this, yeah, let's see, 45%. You, it's pretty easy to miss this fatal blow if you're not used to the gravity of the opponent within your combos. So I would just get used to the uh, good routes. If you if you're not sure, you can also just do uh, standing floor into, into fatal blow. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but they're frozen, so just freeze on, standing for Fatal Blow. If you, if you feel like you can't get a good uh, follow-up on the freeze, this will still net you pretty decent damage. But yeah, but it's very basic. This ends in a side switch, so, so keep in mind uh, when you're, where your position, positioning is after landing the Fatal Blow. But yeah, it's pretty standard. I recommend just using it neutral for the armor to, to punish any projectiles or jump-ins. Uh, but yeah. Riptide. Cameos I recommend for Gearus and to cover his weaknesses. Uh, characters like Sub-Zero. I think he's a pretty good, well-rounded character uh, with the added utility of the Frost armor, ignoring projectiles. Good for full-screen presence as well as punishing characters with projectiles if they throw it recklessly including cameo projectiles like serena i also recommend cyrax he's generally a, a good cameo for any character but his ability to cover the gaps with the, within your the your strings for added pressure is very good as well as additional chip damage um landing the net it is a bit difficult be it's slow startup and you can't really, it's hard to combo into it, if at all, unless you freeze them. But once you get the net, if you catch them with the net, you can actually stack a lot of the countdown stacks. So it's a high reward if you do land it. I also recommend Darius if you don't want utility, but you want high reward mix-ups from your command grab or your strings. He has a really... Some really good setups once you get a hit in and corner the the opponent but uh clear clear win condition but if you happen to use him you or you can play back until he recharges again and then uh keep going for those those mix-ups and lastly a kung lao is very underrated right now i think kung lao with with his low hat being able to delay it you can delay your overhead and low uh, low mix-ups with the addition of the the clone and the redo redo moves. Kung Lao is just really good with uh, enhancing your offense as well as your defense if you want to stall while using countdown because you have a pro an extra projectile that's really fast, recharges fast, and you can also convert off of his teleport so if you were to combo with a regular freeze you can teleport use a cameo teleport to cancel out of view of the animation and continue the combo without using meter so i think kung lao eventually is going to be my pick but so far i do recommend everyone to pick up sub-zero uh for for garris so what i like to start off with the sub cameo is he has his ambush move which is the move you're going to use while moving around the screen it is his ice armor and what this ice armor does is it ignores projectiles so it's very super good so i'm just going to make reptile uh let me just make him do a force ball this cameo it ignores the force ball completely 
even the damage, I don't take any damage from it. Um, if I have this while moving and they mess up and do a projectile, that's a free punish. So very, very solid if you're also playing the full screen game. If you don't want to take trades with projectiles, if you have the life lead, you can turn on the ice armor and start using uh, Sandstorm to have more of a full screen presence. And what I also like is his I his cold shoulder, which is pretty fast charge move. Gets for a knockdown. If you get the hit, it's plus enough on him for you to get a countdown stack. So let's say they're you're catching them in the neutral, hit them with this. Go into your countdown. That's already one, one stack. Uh, granted, if they don't, if they have a teleport, I'd be more careful to do it. But if they don't, if they have to dash in just to go go for a punish, then this is what I would do. Especially in combination with the ice armor into the cold shoulder, is this pretty pretty good for building those stacks up and in playing neutral. Um, one other thing I like about Sub Zero is normally Garrus would have a 950 health, but uh, Sub Zero would give you 50, um, an additional 50 health to your stats. So right now I'm at a thousand. If you see the little steam coming from my health bar, uh, that which just signifies that the cameo is giving me additional health um, instead of the flat 950. And also his grab does pretty decent damage. 2% more than my back throw and leaves him full screen. So it's a nice little bonus. And another thing is this move. He has the the ice burst of freeze. So you can normally you can uh do a freeze of your own, the time stop from the string. But with the cameo, you can actually connect it. So if you do this. You can connect the combo into the extension. So that is really good. It covers the weakness of that string. Um, if you're just using it uh, but just by itself and you're, you're hit confirming, instead of just going using the full string and then canceling it, you can use Sub-Zero to keep them standing. And if you have them frozen, you can do a stack of countdown. Sorry. And then, uh, as Stack of countdown into another one, and th this is an example combo. But uh, you get three stacks from that one hit. So just that one hit gave me 28% damage and uh, world stop. I was able to just just get that off the hit. I feel like Sub Zero uh, makes Garrus excel at that point. Each Taking advantage of each hit. Help, help giving opportunities to give him a countdown. And there is a very also unique interaction that Sub-Zero has with Gears that not other cameos give him. So normally this move has its own time limit before I go back. I don't choose when to go. It's just whenever I get hit or when the timer runs out. Or if I'm, I'm blocking, I let go of block at the end of the lifespan. So I can just stay in the stay for a long time and then get out. Uh, but with Sub-Zero, so with the ice armor, I'm able to negate that uh, that state at any point I want. Um, if, for example, let's say you're here and you're fighting, but then Reptile is waiting for you to teleport back to the state because uh, I, um, I didn't mention this earlier, but you can get punished if the opponent times the um, your, you restoring yourself back. While you're recovering, you can get punished for that if they time it right. But if they mess up, you can block um, but the reason why I state that is if they're waiting for you to go back, you can use Sub-Zero to negate that effect and then go back to, to neutral. Essentially, them either forcing it to go in on you if they think you have ice armor, or you go back and let go of block to, to, to teleport. Um, and also a good thing about that is, let's say if you're in this redo state, 
you do a, a full combo like this and then you go back you're not really able to confirm off of that but with sub-zero sub-zero you get the hit oh sorry i messed up there we use this one you can end it earlier you sub zero to cancel it so you don't go back because normally that combo won't work if you just weren't doing it this string you'll you'll be forced to go back you're not able to extend that combo uh but sub zero you're able to take more risks while in the redo state And then to continue off of that. So I, those synergies alone is the reason why I'm currently playing him and uh, why I recommend anyone who is a beginner for Garrus to use him to check him out because he's not hard to pick up and he's pretty easy to master. You can move on to other cameos like Cyrax or Kung Lao, but those require a bit more uh, execution getting used to. Kung Lao, like you have to, in order for the low hat to even work, you have to hold it. And I feel like new, newer players were picking Garrus up. I don't, I don't recommend le learning that because it's it gets pretty tricky getting the, the timings out or holding the a button while you're moving gets uh, a bit harder. Uh, but with Sub Zero, I think it's very pretty pretty good to pick up. All right, everyone. So now we're gonna get enter the combo portion of the video. So just keep bear in mind that some of these combos aren't gonna be the most optimal damage that you might see there might be a better combo than the one you see here but the point of these combos is for you to get started on each string or beginner string and what to use well within those combo combo routes i'll also include some combos using the sub-zero cameo uh, but without further ado take a look at these combos and jot them down and start learning them I think Garrus excels in fighting characters who don't have a lot of long normals. So if they have stubby normals, you're able to just bully them with the, the sweep and then play around with the with these pokes and then force them to mix up when you get in on them. You, you have a lot more leeway in how you want to control the pace with those kinds of characters. I, I feel like he struggles against characters who have long normals, able to punish from afar. Uh, and can pressure him easily up close to be like harder to keep away characters like Tanya and Kenshi I feel do really well against Garrus uh, but so far I feel like you have a lot of specials to work with to put play around those matchups it's all about finding fight what kind of player you fight and how they deal with you 
counting down the decision making with uh, stacks of countdown ready to, to use as well as using redo or world stop you just generally I just have to play 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 around that but overall I think he's a really he's a really solid character he's gonna take a long time to get used to for people to get used to fighting him and as well as playing him because he has so many specials to work with and on top of cameos there is a lot that he he can do that people are just the discovering so it's all about a matter of whether it's it'll be viable in tournament we'll, time will tell if that will be the case if he's still going to be a solid character by then thank you all so much for watching if you would like to check out a text version of this video click the link within the description down below if you like this video please leave a like and comment below with your thoughts and i hope everyone will do well with the guardian of the hourglass gears have a great day everyone